We want to create a fully functional user profile UI with two states, the viewing state and the editing state. In the latter one, we will allow the user to change his personal information such as name, email and description text. We will also persist the user choice of the dark mode if it is enabled or not. And lastly, the user can also change his profile picture, whereas he can choose an image from the library. If you are new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. Let's get started by creating the upper part of our design. Therefore, we create an app bar and under it, we want to create a profile picture with this edit button. Therefore, let's get started with our build method. And here inside, we want to create an app bar. And therefore, we create here a new method, build app bar. In my case, I will create here a new file, app bar widget, and here inside, we create then our build app bar method. Here inside, we return then a normal app bar and put a leading property to this back button. And with this, we have here this back button in our app bar. And secondly, we want to remove all the shadow from our app bar. And we also want to make our app bar transparent. Therefore, I set here the background color to transparent. Also make sure to go to your main file and here you need to choose then a primary color within your theme. And if you choose here a light background color, for example, this one, then the app bar will display all of our icons here inside as black. However, if you choose here a dark primary color, then all of your icons will get also white and you don't see them anymore. All right, let's go back to our app bar widget. And here we also want to set then our actions. And here I simply put an icon button inside with an icon, which I define here. So this is this moon icon. And we also want to implement here our on press handler so we later can toggle our dark mode. After this, we can go back to our profile page. And now we want to create here our profile picture with this edit button. Therefore, we create a list view to display multiple widgets under each other. And secondly, we want to create a new user file. And here inside, we want to create a user class. And inside of it, we want to define then all the fields which we use here in our design. So for example, the name and email is later displayed here. The image path is displaying here our image. Then we have also the about text, which is displayed here at the bottom. And lastly, we have the flag is dark mode, with which we later can toggle between the dark theme and the light theme. All right, let's also create our constructor. And next, we want to create a new file user preferences. And here we want to define then our user data. And therefore, I simply put here all the user data inside, which you see on the right side. For the image path, I simply choose then a URL, which is pointing to an image in the internet. And lastly, we also define here this is dark mode flag. And initially, we want to set it to false. So we have initially the light theme. And now we want to access this my user field to also display all of these information in our UI. Therefore, we go back to our profile page. And here inside, we access then the my user field. And here specifically, we want to start by accessing the image path to display then also our image here in our UI. Therefore, back in our profile page, we want to create a new widget, the profile widget. And inside of it, we want to set from our user then the image path. And secondly, we also want to define the on clicked handler. So later, if we then click on our image, then we want to go to the edit page. Next, we want to create this profile widget together. Therefore, we create here a new constructor where we put then the image path and the on clicked handler inside, which we have defined before. Within our build method, we want to build then this image and therefore we return here a method build image and we also want to make our image centered. Within this build image method, we create then out of our image path a network image and now we want to display this image from the internet. Therefore, we create here an image with this ink widget and here we put then our network image inside. And next to it, you also need to define the size of your image. Therefore, we give it here a size of 128 pixels in width and height. And with this, we have here a normal square image inside. And next, we also want to make our image rounded. And secondly, we also want to give it here an effect if we click on this image. So let's start with the effect. If I right now here click on this image, there is no effect. However, if you put within your ink image here this inkwell inside, and here you also implement this on tap handler with the on clicked handler, which we have defined outside of this widget. If you do this, then you can tap here on this image and you see here this splash effect. 
Next, we also want to make our image rounded and therefore you simply wrap here around this widget a clip oval widget. And to make this work, you always need to set around your ink wheel also here this material widget and here you need to set then the color to transparent. And now if you hot reload, you see that our image is also rounded. And if we click on this image, you also see the splash effect. Next to this rounded image, we also want to create here this rounded edit button. And therefore we go to our build method and we want to wrap here our build image method inside of a stack. And with the stack, you can overlap multiple widgets on top of each other. And in our case, we want to put on top of our image an edit button. Therefore we put it here after this. And then we want to create this build edit icon method. Within this method, we create an icon widget and this has then here this icon. And with this, our icon is displayed here at the top left corner of our stack. Instead, we want to display it on the bottom right corner. And therefore we go here all the way up again. And then we wrap here our build edit icon inside of a positioned widget. And here you can define how far away it should be from the bottom right corner. And the bottom right corner is somewhere here around. And we also want to have it more here on the left side. Therefore I put here this right to four. And now that our edit icon has the right position, we also want to include here then this rounded background. Therefore we make first of all our icon in the color of white. And secondly, we want to wrap here another method around build circle. And within this method, we define the padding around, which is eight pixels and also the color. And now we create our build circle method and we want to modify our icon here with a container widget. And then we want to use here all of these properties. So let's start here with the color. And now if I hot reload, you see that the background color is blue. And secondly, we also want to define here the padding. And this is then adding some space to all sides. And with this, we have created the square background and we also want to make that then rounded. And therefore you simply wrap here this clip oval around. Next, we also want to create this beautiful effect that we have here a white color around. And this is pretty simple. We simply wrap here around our current widget, another build circle method. And this time we define here then the color of white and we also give it some padding around. And with this, you see that we have included here also this white circle. And if I put here another color inside, for example, red, then you see it better. So basically it's a circle around your icon. Next, we want to create this part of our UI. So we want to create the username, the email, and also a button. Therefore, we go to our profile page and here inside we have already the profile widget, which was here this rounded image. And under our profile widget, we want to display then our username. Therefore, we create a new method build name and we also put the user information inside. Within this build name method, we want to create then a column to display multiple widgets under each other. And we want to get started here by displaying first of all the username. And we also make our font size bold and we also make it bigger. Under our username, we want to display our email and therefore I create another text widget with accessing here the user email. And we also have changed here the text of the color so that it is gray. Under these text, we want to create right now also this button. Therefore, we go here back to our build method and here under our build name method, we want to display then our button. And therefore we create here this new method build upgrade button and inside of it we want to create a new button widget and this button should have the text upgrade to pro and secondly we can implement the on click handler so later if we click on this button then we can put here our functionality inside. And now we want to create this button widget therefore we get here first of all the text widget and also the on click handler. And here within the build method we create then an elevated button. And this comes from the Flutter SDK and we also want to put then a text inside. And secondly, we need to implement the onPress handler because it's a button and therefore we can click on it and we simply put then our onClick handler inside. And with this, we have here this stretched button and we also want to give it a style. Therefore, I implement this elevated button style. And inside of it, we want to set the text color to white. Secondly, we want to set the shape to stadium border and this will make our button here rounded at the edges. And lastly, we want to set some padding, but before we do this, we go back to our profile page and then we go to the implementation of our build upgrade button. And here we want to wrap this inside of a center widget. 
And with this our button will be centered and also takes the minimum size it can get. Back in our button widget we go again to the style property of our button and here we want to include also some padding. And now if I hot reload you see we have here more padding to the left, to the right and also a bit to the top and bottom. Furthermore we want to create here this following count, followers count and also some other counter. Therefore let's go to our profile page to this upgrade button and under it we want to display then our counters. Therefore we create here under our upgrade button this numbers widget. And then we create a numbers widget and we create here then a row to display multiple widgets next to each other. And in our case we want to display here three buttons next to each other. Therefore we create here a method build button. And inside of it we supply then all the values for our buttons. So first of all we define here the value which is always displayed at the top. And secondly we define then the text and this is displayed here at the bottom. And then we create this build button method where we get the value which is displayed on top and the text which is here displayed under it. And now we create here a material button widget and inside of the child property we create a column to display the text and these other texts under each other. And we get started here with our value text, therefore I create a text widget with the value. This results in that we have here three different buttons with the value inside. And under our value we want to display then the text and therefore I create another widget for the text. And this looks then like this, so we have here now also the text under it and every time we have here this button. Next we want to style our button a bit if you like, so you can include here for example some padding vertically. And now if I hot reload you see we have here more padding vertically for our button. Like you can see in this design we also have some dividers between our buttons. Therefore we go here back to our row widget and here between our buttons we want to include then every time a divider. Therefore we create a new method build divider and here we return then a vertical divider. And if we hot reload you see that we have here more space between our items already, however you cannot see the divider yet. To make your divider visible you also need to define the size of your divider and the first thing what you can do is you can for example wrap here around your row widget an intrinsic height widget. With this intrinsic height widget we define the height for our vertical divider whereas we say that it should take the height of the other widgets within our row widget. So in our case we have here some button widgets and they have a specific size. And therefore our divider which is every time between our items is also taking here the same height as our buttons. As you can see our divider is barely visible, therefore we also want to go to our main.dart file. And here within the material app and here within the scene property we want to include then a divider color and we set the divider color to black. And now if you hot reload you see that our dividers have here the color of black. In our design you see that the vertical divider doesn't take so much space and therefore we also want to limit our divider space. Therefore you can wrap your vertical divider inside of a container widget and here you can then specify the height of your vertical divider. And now if we hot reload you see that our vertical divider has here 24 pixels in height. And lastly in our design we want to create here this about text. And as you can see we also want to increase here the space between our button and our numbers. And therefore we go here back to our profile page. And here between our button and our numbers widget we also want to increase the space. So we add here vertical space of 24 pixels. And secondly we want to create again some space and under it we want to display then our about text. Therefore I create a new method build about and here we put again the user information inside. And as you remember we have defined before our user and here within our user model class we also have defined this about text which we want to display right now. Therefore let's create this build about method and here inside we want to return a column. And with this we can display two widgets under each other, the header and also the description text. Let's start with the header widget, therefore I create a text widget with the text about. And secondly we create another text widget which is then accessing here this user about text. And now if you hot reload you see this header and the description text. And we also want to give it here some padding, therefore I wrap here a container around and we set here the horizontal padding to 48 pixels. And with this we have here 48 pixels to the left in space and 48 pixels to the right in space. 
In the next tutorial, we also want to create another page where we can edit all of the data within the screen. So you can edit here then the username, for example, and then you can click on save and this username will be then changed here on our page. And in the next tutorials, we will also look at how we can persist all of this data locally. So if the user is here changing some data and then he closes his app and restarts it, then we also want to have the data here again inside, which he has modified before. And of course, we will also look at how we can click here on this image and then we want to change here our profile image. And lastly, we will also toggle the dark mode so that we can switch between the light seam and the dark seam. And by the way, if you want to get here this whole source code of this application, then you can get it with the first link in the description. And with the second link, you can get access to my Flutter courses where I teach you how you can become a better and more efficient developer. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye!